As you know, I've accepted Sister Mary Elizabeth's offer to coach her school's baseball team again. I've drawn up a contract between us. Now understand that simply because you elect me as your manager, that in no way assures you a place on the team. You'll have to earn that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. You've got to show me some progress. I've added one paragraph. The party of the first part, player, agrees to follow instructions, advice, and orders of the party of the second part, manager, at all times, except when the player is at bat during a regular game and he has a count of three balls and two strikes. He may then use his own best judgment. At all other times, both on and off the field, the player is to follow the instruction of the manager precisely. I believe that's consistent with our agreement. Any questions? Maria? I want you to witness this contract. I'll need your signature. that I don't know then you'll take responsibility for it and I'll see you after class you probably squealed to the teacher here Tom I didn't tell her anything. Good. And you got nothing to be afraid of. Let's go. Come on. After you do this, you'll be one of us. You ever been in the hull of a ship before? I can't. Oh, yes, you can. Because if you don't, we're going to throw you in the water. And I bet you can't even swim. <laughs>
I was afraid once too. Once all my people were like you. They were frightened of everything. Come, sit. You must listen. Soon he is going to speak on the radio. The Führer. Do you like it? It is a hiking song. Young people in my country are very fond of hiking. My country is now the proudest nation in the world. He has raised it from the dead, freed it from its enemies, and made it the strongest nation in the world. And delivered it from fear. This is the last time one of those broadcasts will be played in this house. It is also the last time that I'm going to tell you about it. Is that understood? You should be out practicing baseball. Good afternoon, Teresa. Is the guest room made up? Come put your things away. We'll have dinner at seven. All right, I'll fix us some drinks. newspaper talk. We're really special agents of the FBI. Show me where you were wounded in the shootout with Ma Barker. Please. 
Not now, Gordon. Go wash up for dinner. I think I'm ready to be telling you stories all night long. Well, he's a very good listener, and I enjoy it a lot. Oh, you're sweet to say so. Excellent as usual, Maria. Excellent. It's Teresa. She's a treasure. Mm. She certainly is. <laughs> well, it's certainly good to be back with you again. We're just glad to have you. Gordon, I have a little present I think you might enjoy. What do you say to your uncle? Thank you, Uncle Ray. You're very welcome. You shouldn't have. No, there's nothing really. Like <laughs> You'll spoil him. faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter, so help me God. And, and that, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter, so help me God. Be seated. Look around, gentlemen. You're the cream of the crop. Maybe you'll all make it. But that's unusual. We're going to give you two years of college training in 13 weeks. I'd like to direct your attention to this briefcase. This 
is your bureau briefcase. Open it. Yes, sir. Inside, you'll find your badge and service revolver. Ever uh, fired one of those before? Yes, sir, many times. Any other weapons training? Yes, sir. Army, M1, 45, BAR. Put the gun back in the bag. Don't tell me just because you've been in the Army, Navy, or the Marine Corps, you know how to use a gun. Because you don't. Or because you were law review at Fordham, you're ready to take Mr. Hoover's job. We'll tell you when you know how to use a gun. Mr. Hoover will let you know when he's ready to retire. See that? I'd say Mr. Liddy has a certain amount of potential. If we can break him of some of his bad habits, he might make it. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, criminal investigations. Do succeed. That's what's expected from a special agent. How do you accomplish that? You dominate the situation. How? With initiative and resourcefulness. In short, gentlemen, you do whatever you have to. But you don't. And I mean never embarrass the Bureau. Suppose you've requested bank records where a subpoena cannot be obtained and the banks refused. What would you do? Uh, Mr. O'Connell. I would initiate a show cause petition through the United States Attorney's Office. Thank you. Mr. Liddy. I would obtain the necessary credentials, present myself as a bank auditor, and gain access to the records on that basis. Thank you. That's bull, and you know it. Yeah, sure, get the job done, but how do you justify impersonating a bank auditor? Where's it say the FBI is above the law? I never said I was above the law. How do you justify breaking the law to get what you want? Sometimes that's what it takes. You don't see any problem with that? Well, come on, think about it. What if you were on the other side of some of this garbage they pull, huh? You got a law degree. This stuff is scary. Okie, maybe you should be a priest. Yeah, sure. Let's get something to eat, huh? I'm not hungry. I need to practice. Gordon, you're good enough to pass right now. I'm not interested in just passing. I want to be good enough to put one between someone's eyes. Any time, any place. Now that you know how to use a gun, I have something for you. It's that tradition. You are now part of the best law enforcement agency in the world. Well, I'm aware of that, sir. And thank you. In a week or so, you'll be getting your orders. I'd like to run an indices check on someone. As suggested in class. Are you starting an investigation already? Oh, no, sir. I'm getting married. Her father is over six foot three. Her IQ is over 130. He's a former naval officer. Her genes give every indication that she's going to give me some outstanding children. I'd like to have five or six. Her name is Frances Purcell. I'm sure she's clean, but I want the Bureau to be happy with her. Yeah, so she's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'll take care of it. Thank you, sir.
clerk said he left the hotel at 7.15. Huh. Well, you don't fiddle around none. That should put him there about uh, 7.30. Looks like we'll have to set up a little welcoming committee for him. He's presumed to be armed. Presumed to be? <laughs> Sally carries more guns than dogs do fleas. He's armed, all right. The boys are up bright and early. Sally Cavello's father died. Gary office thinks he's headed this way. Probably try and uh, make the funeral home. Just knew I'd be seeing him again. You gonna take him at the funeral home? <laughs> no, no, sir. If I know old Sally, he'll have a sudden machine gun hidden in his daddy's casket. You <laughs> know. I want old Sally before he gets to that funeral home. You need any help? I'd like to be part of the team that apprehends Cavallo. Well, I, I think we've got this one pretty much handled, but, but thanks. Oh, reports, reports. There's nothing I hate worse than paperwork. You see if these get filed, please. Tell me something. Liddy could pass for an undertaker in that suit he's wearing. Why don't we send him over to the funeral home in case Cavello gets by us? <laughs> Why not? Well, we're going to have to break him in sometime. Hang on to it. You can get one of your own. Just remember, you need enough to be able to shoot. You have to know when to shoot. And even more important, you have to know when not to shoot. It embarrasses hell out of the Bureau when you put a round to a taxpayer. You do that, and you'll wish you were the taxpayer. I just remember, you carry a gun, and that makes you a gunfighter. Now, gunfighters are in the business of killing. No warning shots, no shooting to wound. You ain't the Lone Ranger. Don't draw unless you're fixing to kill a man. We're covering it, ready to kill him. Don't draw unless you're right to kill him. And then, by God, do it. And you don't stop shooting until you're sure he's dead. And you'd be surprised how many dead ones have enough life left in them for one more shot. Now, uh, I'm a hard shell Baptist, and I ain't believe in a merciful Lord, but let me tell you something. A merciful man and a careless man all end up the same way in this business. Dead. You leave mercy to the Lord. You can pray for his soul if you want to, but first things first, kill it. Street. Down about two blocks, set to follow. Negative. Stay away from him. Keep him in sight and report, but do not. Turn with him. I can't hold him much longer. What are they doing? Brake lights. They're stopping. Somebody's come out of the house. The package is picking up a fourth party. Impossible to ID from this distance. All right, 2-5. I gotta know if that's our man. Pass him, eyeball him, and make it sure. We'll go with your say-so. Make it good, pal. You come up with a bum idea, and then I'll go down the drain with you just for being in the same car. It's him. Should we notify Branta? Get ready to turn on the siren. I'm moving from D.A. to county judge. That means everybody moves up one notch. <laughs> Wish I had something to offer you. The only thing open is an assistant D.A. slot. You're overqualified. Why don't you let me worry about that? From a bureau supervisor under Hoover to uh, assistant D.A. in Poughkeepsie? Why? How far was I going to go with Hoover? Besides, I'm just not cut out to be a rear echelon soldier. Hell no, we won't go! Hell no, we won't go! Hell no, we won't go! Hell no, we won't go. Hell no, we won't go. Hell no, we won't go. Hell no. Pick 
him in the butt, that go. <laughs> what about private practice? You can't deal with that in private practice. We could use somebody who knows something about the practical side of criminal law. <laughs> Is the prosecution ready for summation? Yes, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, you remember this piece of evidence. Exhibit E and the testimony of the police officer who said that when he picked up this weapon, there were five live rounds and one expended round that was in direct line with the barrel. Now, if this weapon was fired, how could the empty be in direct line with the barrel? Let me show you. I'm gonna put this empty here, not in direct line with the barrel. Watch the cylinder very carefully. I'm going to pull the trigger slowly so you can see for yourself what happens. Order. Your Honor, I object. Mr. State. Mr. Liddy, I want to see you in my chambers immediately. Mr. Letty, Peter Marulis. I just came from Judge Branco's chambers. What have you done to that man? He's foaming at the mouth. Marulis, I know that name. I was assistant DA a few years ago. Oh, that's why it sounded so familiar. Uh, mm-hmm, I've heard a lot about you. Not as much as I've heard about you. I plan to ask Judge Branco to support a motion for a new trial. Not today, I won't. <laughs> He'll get over it. <laughs> Yeah, not that you seem to need it, but if I can help in any way. Well, there is one thing. What do you know about Timothy Leary? That he's holed up in the Blaylock estate with a bunch of his disciples. From what I'm told, it's a pretty wild scene. Where it is, the panties are dropping as fast as the acid. <laughs> no arrest? Hey, you don't know the Blaylock estate. It's like a walled fortress. Now, uh, if a person was really interested, I suppose he could fly over. You know, I could run a plane? You're looking at the owner of one. Peter? I think I'm gonna like you. Are we coming over the high rent district now? How did he ever get access to the Blaylock estate? The old man died left the place to his children. Now, one's in the real estate, and the other's in the chicks and motorcycles. All right, we're coming up on it now. I want that warrant. He doesn't see what's so important about harassing some harmless flower children. Maybe he should read what flower child Mark Rudd had to say in the paper today about creating a revolution in this country. Creating chaos in the streets, offing pigs, blowing up banks. He may call that harmless, but I take it a different way. I call that war. Call me. issued by the state of New York. Put some pants on that man. Hey. I told him I wanted to talk to you first before I gave him an answer. I think you already know what you're going to tell him. I want to get back to Washington now, but on my terms. The only way I can affect a change at that level... <laughs> well, I can't run for Congress without your help. What about the way it'll change us, our family? Gordon, we're having trouble paying the bills as it is. We'll get help. I got a lot of publicity for the Leary bust. They promised support. This is what I've been waiting for, Francis. I don't know if I can make it through a campaign. Honey, I'm happy being with you and raising our kids. If a man can't fight for what he believes in, what good is it? 
If we're not a family, what good is that? Hi. We'll be together, Fran. I promise. that we're in today there are cities aflame people descending on washington to stop our government killing police just because they are police bombing of the pentagon bombing the very capital of our country ladies and gentlemen we are in a civil war let's get out of here this man is dangerous send me to washington and the right side will win this civil war Arthur Dawson. Have we met Mr. Dawson? I don't believe so. I'm a friend and supporter of Hamilton Fish. If you're here to persuade me to drop out of the race because I'm dividing the party, the answer is no, Mr. Dawson. I did come here to discuss a candidate today, but it isn't Ham Fish. I work for John Mitchell, Richard Nixon's campaign manager. This is my wife, Fran Liddy. How do you do, Mr. Liddy? How do you do? Frankly, we're concerned that Richard Nixon's support is dying on the vine in Dutchess County. Governor Rockefeller seems concerned with, how shall I say it, uh... Jacob Javits and other liberal causes. And we understand each other. We're very impressed with your organization, Mr. Liddy, very impressed. But you're not going to win the election. Pam Fish will represent the 28th District. Now, if you were to channel your efforts into making sure that Mr. Nixon receives a plurality in the Mid-Hudson Valley region, I'd see to it that your efforts come to Mr. Mitchell's attention, and after Mr. Nixon takes office, I'd say, Mr. Liddy, that you'd land on both feet. John tells me they're putting you in Treasury with a very impressive title. Special Assistant to the Secretary of Organized Crime. Excellent. Be careful one thing. I'm told Assistant Secretary Resides Feathers got a bit ruffled about that title. He would have preferred me being called secretary to him? Yeah, he might be a little careful of him. Well, I'm not planning on being there long enough for that to be a problem. Well, there isn't all that much movement in that area. I'll make some. <laughs> Come on, boys. I want to see a little hustle. Bye, Bye. Tomorrow we get up earlier. Are those the boys that threw the eggs at the window? No. See you later. Bye, hon. Van belong to you? Then get out of it. Who died and left you, King? Mr. Liddy. Bye, Dad. Bye bye. See you later. Bye, Dad. Bye. 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 Okay. Mr. Liddy, I have to talk to you. Until your children enrolled at this school, there never had been a fight. Really? Now, since that time, there have been several incidents. I've been in contact with your wife. I know about those incidents. One had to do with my son wearing a crew cut, the other with my son wearing a Nixon campaign button. Well, all we ask is that you tell your children to follow school policy. If anyone picks on them, they'd report that person to the proper authorities. Not resort to violence. Miss Lawson, the French children were taught that same philosophy in the late 30s. While well, the German children were taught to be fierce in battle. Inasmuch as the French were destroyed in 30 days by the Wehrmacht. 
I prefer the German philosophy. The school is just going to have to accept it. Good day, Miss Lusk. Mr. Liddy, your uh, proposal to seal the U.S.-Mexican borders will not stop the smugglers. What it will do is cause economic disruption on both sides of the border. Exactly. And which people would suffer the most? Obviously the Mexicans. Right. Forget about the smugglers. It would force them to spray their marijuana fields and their opium fields with Paraguay. They claim they don't have the planes. They may be right, but we do. I'm afraid they'd be totally unreceptive to such a ridiculous suggestion. Then don't make it a suggestion. Make it a demand. You're talking about destroying the relations of the Good Neighbor program that's been built up since the Roosevelt administration. No. I am talking about saving the lives of kids in American cities who are dying from drugs. By poisoning them. When are you people going to do something? The premier of Turkey promised two years ago to stop production and has done nothing. And what do we do about it? His position as premier is tenuous. Now what do you want to do? Bring down the whole Turkish government? Bring down the Turkish government. Maybe the new premier would be more amenable. Uh... Mr. Liddy, what do you propose to do with the American ambassador whose effectiveness you destroy? Have you ever thought about locking him in a room with the Luger to do the right thing? That's an absolutely absurd idea. Good day, Mr. Liddy. my home or my family what'll happen next week John Dean wants to pitch you on something, and uh, I think I ought to be here when he does. You mind? Hell no, bud. I work for you. Besides, with Dean, it's always best to have a witness anyway. <laughs> you know what he wants? Yes. Oh, fine. Send him in. I think I should let him speak for himself. He's here now. Gordon? Hello, John. Bud, how are things over here? Fine, John. One brush fire after another. You know, without Gordon here... I know, I know. Gordon, I think it may be necessary for you to go into the closet for a while. How's that? We have a presidential election coming up next year. I had a little taste this past summer of how the other side is going to operate. We're going to have to be able to counter with an absolutely first-class intelligence operation. Like the proposed sand wedge operation? No. We need something much better. Something more complete, more sophisticated than that. Bud here tells me that you're quite knowledgeable in this area. Well, knowledgeable enough we're talking about what I think we're talking about. An all-out full capability offensive and defensive intelligence service. With covert action. John, you're talking about a hell of a lot of money. That's half a million for openers. A half a million's fine for openers. But I think you're going to need a half million more to finish. No problem. Well, what do you think? I'd like to be sure how they feel I can best serve the president. Bud, you run it by Ehrlichman. John, you run it by Mitchell. If they both agree, 
I am your man. Gordon! Hi. Is it true? I'm on my way over to the committee to re-elect as general counsel. Ah, congratulations. When do you start? Right away. Having a meeting with Jeb in a few minutes. A whiz kid. Gordon, watch yourself over there. I'm going to miss seeing you. I'm only going to be across the street. Gretchen, why don't you come over and watch my back? Well, let's see how it goes with Magruder. Gordon, am I glad to see you. We're just getting started here, and uh, already I've got a stack of legal briefs here I need your help on. <laughs> Not to mention our intelligence operation. We're anxious to get started on that. How soon can you get over here? Right away. Good. I only have two requirements. That my title of general counsel be approved and a salary $30,000. Well, I'm sure we can work out something. Um, there might be a problem in those areas. What kind of problem? <laughs> well, <clears throat> we're all a team here, and we operate without formal titles. And Bob Holderman has a rule. No one is to make money on the campaign. So we can only pay you whatever it is you were making over at the White House. So how soon can you be here? Not until the matter of my title and salary have been settled. Uh, I just explained that we, we can't do that. I don't want to make money on this campaign. But I don't want to continue losing money either. If you want me, an exception will have to be made. Good day, Jeff. Howard Hunt told me that um, he worked for the administration, but he didn't tell me exactly what that means. Could mean a lot. I've just been appointed general counsel to the committee to re-elect the president. And um, you come very highly recommended. Now, what I have in mind for you is very interesting and very lucrative. All for giving out Nixon buttons? <laughs> I haven't even decided yet if I'm going to vote for him. I want you to work for the Democrats. What exactly is the job? Well, it's obvious. Someone with your secretarial skills wouldn't have a problem getting a volunteer job for the Democratic campaign. I'd pay you. Nothing illegal. And once I'm there? And once you're there, then I want them to get to trust you, have confidence in you, and I want you to copy everything in the office. How is that legal? I said, copy, not take anything, just copy. I don't know if I could do that. It sounds too risky to me. No, no, no risk. You were trained for this job. Tell you what, if you decide you want out, you're out. And no one will know. Well, you'll know. I wouldn't say anything. That's what you say now. But under pressure, people do a lot of things. There are some people who cannot be made to talk. I don't believe that. Excuse me, I, I don't feel well. Oh. I couldn't possibly take this job in any way. I, I'm getting married in September. I'm sorry. Gemstone. Various components bear the names of precious and semi-precious stones. As requested, 
this plan has full offensive and defensive capabilities. Diamond is our counter demonstration plan. The key is to kidnap radicals before the convention, drug them, and hold them in Mexico until after the convention. Just how do you propose to do that? Knocked on naval general. Night and fog. They just disappear into the night and fog. What's that? Special action group. And such group, they general. People who can and will do whatever is necessary to stop mass organized violence. Some of them are professional killers who account for 22 dead. Two were hanged from the beam of a garage. Now where did you find men like that? I understand they're members of organized crime. And how much will their services cost? Like professionals anyway, they don't come cheap. Well, let's not contribute any more than we have to to the coffers of organized crime. This chart demonstrates the flow of cash, materials and services. Gordon, a million dollars is a hell of a lot of money. Much more than we had in mind. Now, I want you to go back and come up with something more realistic. And Gordon, burn those charts. Do it personally. Yes, sir, General. I want to thank you for your help. so late. You don't want to know. Does that have to do with the committee? I said you don't want to know. I don't understand what's going on. What's all the secrecy for? Oh, I don't want to hear that. When I was with the FBI, when did I ever talk about my work? You're a lawyer now for the committee. I see. This is like the 68 campaign. I'm left out again. Fabulous, isn't it? Look, are you kidding? I didn't come over here to look at campaign paraphernalia. <clears throat> Gordon, you did an excellent job on pairing the budget. I'm going to recommend it. Uh, I, I, I just have uh, one uh, suggestion. The uh, prostitutes from the National Convention, why not uh, get them up here and put them to work immediately? That would be like shipping cars to Detroit. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, all free stuff up here, what's the point? Oh, uh, one other thing. Um... Uh, uh, can you get into the water gate? That's not part of the plan. Well, I don't care about that. Can you do it? It's a high security building, but yeah, I could do it. Uh, how about putting a bug in O'Brien's office? Why? O'Brien's on his way to Miami. Aren't we a little late? Well, there's still plenty of activity over there. We want to know whatever's said in his office. Okay, I can do it. Uh, phones, too. Phones are easy. Ah, uh, and uh, while you're in there, uh, photograph whatever you can find. All right, Jeb, I'll do it. But remember, that's not a part of our business deal. And starting with an optional entry, you're starting off on the wrong foot. Get in there as soon as you can, Gordon. It's important. Okay. We're supposed to decide when, Gordon. 
We've got to get in there tonight. Fantastic. Just fantastic. I'm glad to know Aunt Mary's over the flu. And a hairdresser has a 10 o'clock opening. I told you that tapping Watergate phones was top priority. And what is this, Gordon? Is this what you bring me? I don't control who uses the phone in that office. Of course. What about the room bug, the one in O'Brien's office? Nothing. Well, what does that mean, Gordon? Has his office been empty? Or is it some other type of failure? Could have been one of two causes. An obstruction between the transmitter and the receiver, or a faulty transmitter. A transmitter we paid $30,000 for? Is, it, is this all the photographs? It was not a photographic mission. Our purpose was to go in there and install electronic surveillance equipment. Dan has told us nothing. Here's what I want to know. The files. I want to see photographs of the files. If O'Brien has anything on us, it's right here. Do you go in there again? You take all the men, all the cameras you need. Here's what I want to know. Do it tonight. Don't come back without it. For God's sake, Gordon, a guard found the tape on the door. It didn't just pop off. We are bored. Nathan's people put tape on doors all the time. There are two ways to use the key. Besides, if the guard was alarmed, the police would be here by now. What the hell is so important about getting in there tonight, anyway? You don't have to face Mitchell on Monday. Parker, what do you think about this? I'm ready either way. I'd rather get it over with. All right. We go tonight as planned. I'm not going back to the White House saying I failed. Suits, why? They're on the sixth floor now. Four or five guys, one of them's got on a cowboy hat. One's wearing a sweatshirt. It looks like guns. They got guns. It's trouble. One to two, do you read me? That's an order. Do you read me? dust on my contact lens. You are contacts? So do I. I assume you're the damage control action officer for this problem. Uh, yes, Gordon. I First, let me put it that way. No, wait a minute. No, there's something that I have to know right away. Did anyone at the White House know you were going in there? I mean, specifically. Gordon, straight here. I don't think he knew the date we went back yet. 
back in. There were two entries. Magruder was pushing for it. If you recall, I was the one that was supposed to say when and where. That got turned around. Magruder authorized you to use McCord? No, absolutely not. That was my mistake. By the time the plan got approved, McCord was the only game in town. McCord's former FBI CIA. He's a pro, so are the Cubans. They won't talk. But on the worst case basis, this is what they could say. Last year, we broke into Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office looking for his file. He's with the same people. Cubans. I'm recording, of course, Hunt. Oh, my God. Don't worry about it. They won't talk. I think it's imperative we bail them out. Washington, D.C. jails a hellhole, especially in the summer. Besides, they expect it, we promised them. Yeah, well, that goes without saying. Everyone will be taken care of. Look, John, I was captain of the ship when she hit the reef, and I'm prepared to go down with her. If someone wants to shoot me, you tell me what corner to stand on, and I'll be there, okay? I don't want some amateur sticking a shotgun through my kitchen window some morning and taking out me and maybe one of my kids. Remember what I said. Believe me, I will. Please rise. Inasmuch as you, Gordon Liddy, are the leader and senior person for the sordid and despicable Watergate operation. This court sentences you to 20 years in prison and a fine of $40,000. Howard Hunt, George Barker, Frank Sturgis, Virgilia Gonzalez, Eugenio Martinez, I am sentencing you provisionally to the maximum sentence of 40 years. However, I am making no promise of leniency, but the sentence I will impose will depend on whether or not you cooperate fully with a permanent subcommittee on investigation of the United States Senate. I fully expect you to cooperate absolutely, completely, and entirely with whoever from the subcommittee, whether it is a senator or whether it is a staff investigator. Whoever it is who interrogates you, you will openly and honestly testify. I recommend your full cooperation with the grand jury and the Senate Select Committee. five of you. What'd you do on the streets? Lawyer. How much you make on the streets? 30,000. Per hour. How much you make per hour? My fee was $100 an hour when I practiced law. Watergate. Right. You lit it, ain't you? Right again. You really know Nixon? Yes. 
Nixon may be president again. <laughs> they can't do nothing for you here. to the shower. my cell. What are you doing here? You have no right to be in my cell. Right? What you talking about? Right. This ain't the White House, chunk. You in the joint. I'll tell you what's right. Get out. What's going on in here? That's enough. Come on. Break it up. Break it up. Did he do that to you? No. Okay, Williams, back to yourself. Don't you make it easy on yourself, Liddy. You're gonna be here for a while. What happened to your ear? A misunderstanding with one of my colleagues. <clears throat> Circuit chose this prison on purpose. This is all part of it. I've got to hand it to the old goat. 20 years breaking and entering first offense. A juror who couldn't even speak English. You know the only difference between us? I admit to being what I am. And he pretends to be this great seeker of justice. 
Well, it's going to get a lot worse, Gordon. They're bound to determine to get you to testify before the grand jury and the Senate Select Committee. Mrs. Lidge is here to see you. Well, you can't see or hear your maximum security. You'll have to go in the booth. Damn it, Peter. This is the worst time for her to be here. Gordon, listen to me. I know you don't want to be vulnerable to anything. But she needs to see you. Yes, I know. But I want us to stay together as a family, and we can't do that if we don't communicate. They're changing so fast. I'm sorry, I know I'm not making it any easier for you, but I can't stop thinking why. Why does it have to be you? You know why. I can't compromise. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't help it. It's so unfair. Our children are going to grow up and you're not going to be there. Gordon, they need you. I need you. Okay, lady. Time's up. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? No. in dental meditation. Really clears the head. Ever try it? No. There's no point in holding out any longer. They know everything. What do you mean, they know everything? I mean, they've got it all. They know all about the Beverly Hills entry. They've got the Odessa file. How do you know? They showed me. Somehow they got a hold of the Odessa file. Why help them? Gordon, I may as well tell you now. I'm not holding out any longer. There's no point to it. I'm cooperating with the prosecutor.
forever. Just give me his name. He was dead before the last count. Howard Hunt. start with that guru trip, you gotta know. I haven't received orders to kill them and they may not come. But if they do, I want to be ready. Whatever it is, just let me know. It's not a problem. You should have them off these peaches. The peaches I don't want. The peas I'll eat. I regret deeply any injuries that may have been done in the course of the events that led to this decision. I would say only that if some of my judgments were wrong, and some were wrong, they were made in what I believed at the time to be the best interest of the nation. To those who have stood with me during these past difficult months, to my family, my friends, the many others who joined in supporting my cause because they believed it was right. I would be no, eternally grateful for your support. How does something like that happen? And to those who have Man's supposed to be the president? not felt able to give me your support. He should have been more ruthless. Let me say. He should have burned the tapes. I leave. You can't have no it both bitter. ways. For those who the force. Peter, they're transferring you to Danbury. Maybe they think I'm getting too comfortable here. I don't know. I'm not sure what they have in mind. But watch yourself. Here's a copy of Sir Rick's decision denying reduction of sentence. He maintains you weren't singled out. Time Magazine's Man of the Year. I told you he had a room temperature IQ. Mm. Peter, when they want you, they've got you. Hey, we're still at it, though. Now, Gretchen's in a position to get us copies of everything. Fran's working on a campaign to get you freed. She's gotten a lot of support. From the Democrats, of course. Gordon, why can't you make things easy on me, like uh, Chuck Colson, find God or something? Colson? If he would run over his grandmother for Nixon... What do you think you'd do for God? G. Gordon Liddy. He's trouble already. Get a hold of Sam in R&D. Tell him I want Liddy assigned to D-Block. I have no intention of having one man upset this entire institution. Who's in charge of D-Block? Kowarski. Well, you get a hold of Kowarski and tell him I expect Mr. Liddy to be a model prisoner. And Chuck, I want you personally to supervise this situation. All right.
the deck, Lenny. Sandwiches from the mess hall of contraband. For your information, I was eating a cracker. How did you get tell a sandwich from a watermelon from where you were? It's a mop or a shot. You want to go up on charges? You take the shot, you get in up in the hole. Mr. I'm here for 20 years. I can't make parole until 81, and you have to let me out by 94. I'll take the shot. Find someone else to mop. Hey, Liddy. I see you later. Oh, I'll talk to you. I guess somebody wants to talk to me. Liddy, meet Salvatore Napoli. <laughs> Sit down. You're walking alone in the yard. From now on, you walk with me. Here you can see the right kind, like a church. Liddy, we have read your account as well as the report filed by Mr. Korski. And we find that there is insufficient evidence to warrant punishment. But we remind you that all rules regarding conduct in D-Block are strictly enforced. You can go. Next time, do it right. It was addressed to me, but it was written to someone else. Who? Gretchen. Oh, Fred, I'm sorry. Peter, I don't care about the letter. But I am worried about what Gordon will do if he finds out. Gentlemen, you're on notice. Interfere with my family at your own peril. You're out of line, Liddy. All I wanted to do was be left alone to do my time. But no, you and your underling chose to shoot. Well, that's just fine. Because unlike anyone you've ever had here, I can shoot back. And I have the heavy artillery. You know what this man's talking about? I am talking about the tactics of switching letters. Now, you know what I mean. Liddy, we know nothing about this. But if you have a grievance... I don't want your men. I want you. And I'm going for the throat. The only place you're going is back to your cell. It was good of you to warn us, Mr. Liddy. You just don't see the light, do you, Mr. Liddy? And I'm not even looking for the switch. You're a prisoner here. Just what do you think you're going to do? We'll find out when it's too late. You may control my body, but my strength is here. In a battle of wits, gentlemen, you are unarmed. That'll be enough, Liddy. You forget that you're a convicted felon. Midnight Mass. 
We're all gonna sing with Mr. Napoli. What are you going to do? I'm going to Midnight Mass. Good. Yeah, you threaten the warden. He's a snake. They all are. But I'm concerned that what you do might cause trouble for everybody. Sometimes it's better to wait. I can't. He disrupted my family. I can't let it go. Have you thought about what you're gonna do? I've given a lot of thought. I'm gonna wiretap the bastard. Just what do you call this, Liddy? Memorandum on unsafe conditions. Your life could be in danger, Kowarski. Who you kidding? This is nothing and you know it. I think it'd be prudent for the federal engineers to decide that. But even if there isn't any danger, they might be interested in the energy point of view. The waste of precious OPEC fuel. I've sent copies to the appropriate government agencies. You're really begging for it, aren't you, lady? Memo regarding unsafe conditions in the power plant. Memo regarding dead rat found in mess hall. Memo regarding lack of winter clothing. I'm not going to tolerate this. Realistically, I don't know what we can do about it. I already have my hands full with this policy statements issue. You find a way to stop it. Administration's creating the problem, not I. Amounts to the same thing, man, because you're the cause of it. You get to do your own thing and we pull the freak. Maybe what I've got going could help us both. But we got our own thing going. We got a suit pending against the warden for violation of policy statement. Now, what do we need you for? You need a good lawyer, not some do-gooder attorney. I could beat them at their own game. We join forces. We could win. That's the fence. Shut up. Okay. You're hired. Let me tell you something, man. 
You ain't no different than the rest of us. You are a criminal, man. You are a criminal. Same as us. Warden Dunn to the stand. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Be seated. Welcome to my yard, Warden. Warden, I show you a document marked Petitioner's Exhibit 5 for identification. And will you tell the court what that is, please? This is the Bureau of Presence Policy on Inmate Discipline. And Petitioner's 6 for identification. Will you tell the court what that is, please? The Danbury Prison Policy Statement on Discipline. Whose signature is that, Warden? Mine. Can you explain to the court that in each instant recorded, both the policy statement of the Bureau of Prisons and the one you signed are clearly violated? Well, Your Honor, we train our people constantly and sometimes mistakes are made. These examples are not representative or typical. Warden, this is Exhibit 30. What is that, Warden? What? Where did you get this? This was on my desk. It's confidential. Your Honor, this is a copy of a letter from the guards' union accusing the warden of lying and a set of charges, one of which is that the warden had failed to train his guards. Isn't that so, warden? Lenny did it! Let them plead the 
the Fifth Amendment. Uh, cover up or anything else if it'll save it. Save the plan. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.